Welcome back everyone to our OPL Legend match between the Chiefs and Direwolves. Chiefs able to pick up game one there in what was a very grueling game in the end. And we're going to jump right into it. Carbon, coming to you, what did Direwolves change going into this game too? Uh, I'd love to see the move to, to something more 5v5 um, and also a little bit less predictable. I mean, Chiefs clearly hadn't figured out game one uh, from the draft into the game. Yeah. Well executed plan. Um, I'd love to see Fantix on a carry. I mean, Varus can carry, I suppose, but I'd love to see like a mechanically intensive champion really let him test himself, you know, have a crack. Why not? Yeah, it's something that can play with some reckless abandon there as well. I mean, Varus sort of very slow moving, you're like you're predictable in your play as well. So you're, you're exactly right about the outplay, but give him something that's relatively safe so that he can make those aggressive moves and really bring it to Cheese there in the mid lane. Because Cheese, he was on the Lulu, he was able to skip himself around. Just he was everywhere on that map. So definitely safe. And look, you just couldn't really do so much there in that lane because you're just not going to kill the Lulu. So really put him on something that can make stuff happen. And like, it's that's the thing against Star Wars because you're always looking at the mid lane. It's all about what Fantix is going to change because I have a feeling the rest of it will move around him. Yeah, it certainly does appear to be the center of the compositions a lot of the time. But I also want to talk about the Chiefs. This is their first big test since you guys played them in the final. Is there anything you saw there that you would look to maybe try and exploit is there anything in the Chiefs that you feel that you can attack? Um, well, I think Die Wolves have a few options. Um, like I said before, I think their 5v5 team fight actually matches up pretty well, mechanically at least. Um, they definitely weren't being outplayed per se in the team fights. I think the other thing is um, uh, Ijim's propensity to roam. Uh, he roams a lot. He roamed a lot that game, and we only we saw Ezreal get punished one time. I mean, Ezreal's pretty hard to punish, but at the same time, you know, you can take that tower a little bit faster or, or whatever it is. Or you can be Sybil and just go full mechanics on him. Yep, you can go full Sybil hype. Um, yeah. And I think uh, the one other thing uh, was... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, the jungle. Very little pressure from Spooks that game. And um, I feel like Sybil... I, I want to see Sybil with a little bit more confidence. I mean, he played pretty well that game, but I'd love to just really see him go ham. That's actually what I wanted to draw towards. Spooks like, and Swiffer were always the best friends and... As far as I know, they shared the shot calling a lot, and that gave Spooks a lot of, uh, I guess, control of where he felt he needed to be on the map. Big microscope under Spooks this year, as he's not playing with Swift, or playing for playing with a new mid laner for the first time in a long time. Didn't look like that much of an impressive early game performance out of the Chiefs jungler. Yeah, I actually find it really interesting that you say microscope, because I have a feeling the microscope wouldn't have picked him up the last game, especially in the early game, because we didn't see Spooks at all, and he's sort of known for having the aggression in the right positions. He just wasn't really around the map, and Admittedly, they didn't need him to be, but I really want to see Spooks, and maybe that's where Diawals can capitalize because Sybil, like you were saying in the break, was getting ahead there in the early game. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Graves is you know a little bit farm, f more farm-heavy champion, mm -hmm. so you, you do need to give him a little bit of leeway in that regard. But yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to see a big game from Sybil. I mean, if Spooks is, is not going to... If Spooks is not going to put pressure on, then... Uh, the game is yours, mate. Yeah, because this yeah. is kind of what the Chiefs were famous for. You know, if he didn't have to do anything, he wouldn't do anything. Mm. Sometimes not ganking is actually the right call yep. when you play on a team like the Chiefs. Yep. So definitely not trying to take anything away from their jungle. Just highlighting that there might may be areas that we can look to attack in this certain thing. Want to finish with the uh, agent point. Is the Chiefs a team that you now have to lane swap on if you're someone like the Diawals? Because he looks so impactful around the map. Do you just try and shut down the early game and try and keep him out of there? You saw him trying to invade the blue buff very early, getting deep vision around Fantix lane. You can keep him in a 4v0. We've seen it against the Chiefs time and time again. Is it time to just go back to lane swapping? Well, I mean, uh, not you don't lane swap because of EGM. Like, if, if EGM's strength is roaming... I mean, what's a lane swap going to do? It's going to get him out of lane really quick, um, which you don't really want. Um, so I think keep the standard lanes. I didn't. I didn't think the lane went that bad. Yeah, um, he, he was man he managed to roam a few times. Um, and yeah, to be honest, most of the fault then lies with the dive spot lane and the jungler. You need to put you need to put on more pressure. You can't just let him run around for free. So yeah, looking for maybe a high pressure comp coming into the start of this game. Will be very interesting to see what Cheese's response is. As guys, unfortunately, we do have a slight delay getting into Champions League, so you're going to have to stay with us a little bit longer. We'll be interested to see what Cheese's response is. I was actually really surprised he went towards something like a Lulu pickup, something that the very, uh, Chiefs have been very famous for sticking their mid laners on Lulu, even though they are very mechanically good. See whether he, he is allowed to play something a little bit more aggressive in this lane, Atlas. Yeah, and I also want to see whether Cheese is able to mix up his play style as well. I mean,
Swain. I want the Swain, but it is still another control mage. I actually wanted to move towards something that might be completely different, some, something like one of these all-in sort of assassin-type champions in the mid lane, because we've seen Cheese be very one-dimensional, and if they can show that they have extra stuff that they can do there in the mid lane, like Swiffer was able to, of course, a very versatile player, then the Chiefs will still be this very flexible team in the OPL, whereas now it feels a little bit stagnant there in the mid lane. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I mean, he had a good game, but I didn't see anything amazing. Um, you know, uh, he, he definitely didn't carry. Like, Swiffer used to be able to carry. Yeah. Um, and, and it looks like they may have even changed the dynamic of the team. You know, we saw a lot of resources um, invested into Swiper. Trees is playing utility champion. You know, maybe maybe in the in the uh, locker rooms at the Chiefs, they've decided that um, it's time to give Swiper the carry. That puts even more pressure on Sharp. If this is the direction we're going, and I completely agree with you that that, that game especially, like he mm. had the support in his lane, and if you're getting support pressure, generally, like they were leaving the Ezreal by itself. I was very curious about that as well. Does that mean that you think that Sharp now has to go towards something a little bit more safer, maybe pick up something like the Tom Kench and just try and neutralize the swiper lane? Um, yeah, I mean, you can do that. I think the the, the real alternative, I think, here is um, is just let them pressure Sharp. Um, mm. Just let them go top because you should have free reign. Like, I mean, Die Wolves, I mean, we did say that um, Sharp has improved and, and I do think that he has. I think... Um, that no, that wasn't the best game, but I do think he has improved. So but just diarise him, just leave him yeah, to his own devices. Honestly, uh, honestly, I think you do because they have a, a great mid line now. They have a, a pretty good bot lane, as we saw in that last game. If Egypt wants to stay top, if the jungler wants to stay top, let them three man top and just take to, to take the bottom two lanes. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good point because, of course, we saw at the end of the game there it was to do with the the fact that all the lanes were pushing, but uh, Rays and Perfection had oh sorry, Fantix had so much money. Because they were farming up an absolute storm. These guys are exactly where they want to have the money. So you may as well l just throw Sharp under the bus and let the rest of the team carry through. It makes sense. And this is another game of League of Legends that we saw played 100% in lanes. There, mm. There's no pressure around the Baron. There's no pe pressure around the uh, Dragon objective. You mentioned that this is actually a failing of Graves. That if you pick him early and you don't crush the mid game, you kind of get stuck in a position where you're not a great Sieger, but you also can't up start up the Baron without your top laner. Yeah, um... With Graves, there's kind of this difficulty that you run into where you're ahead, you've taken out all the, the outer towers, but you're too short range to siege the base, and because you actually don't have a true tank, um, I mean, they did that game in the in the Olaf, but so many comps nowadays have a carry top laner as well, you don't have a true tank, so you can't really do the Baron. Um, so you're kind of in this weird limbo land where you, you need to do something because you're ahead, but you can't really, and um, I mean, yeah, they, they had the solution there in the Olaf, but uh, yeah, I think Definitely something to consider when you pick Graves. Yeah, but it was something that I found really interesting because in my opinion, like I was sitting there waiting for it. Like, how is this game still going? The Chiefs, they've secured a Baron. They, the, naturally, the Creeps just pushed in, took one base turret. That's got to be one of those games that you feeling very good whilst you're ahead. Then when you're closing it out, it just doesn't feel like you got everything you needed out of the map. Yeah, exactly. And look, they did manage to get the, the, the sort of 1-3-1 situation with the Lulu split pushing there in the mid lane as well. The Olaf trying to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If this game was, if that game, sorry, was any different though, if Sharp had have died maybe a couple less times, something like that, and the Rise was able to use his late game strength, which he definitely had, to destroy the Olaf, that would have been Direwolves, irrespective. I mean, I think we saw one really good example in the bot lane where I think Corky went down to Rome bot when they tried to do the, the Olaf Shen combo again, and they managed to, excuse me, um, not only hold it off, but as soon as they did, they went. They rotated mid and instantly won a team fight. I think they made maybe two picks and got the mid tower, something along those lines. Um, and what we saw is that there is an answer. If if you give them enough farm, there is an answer. Um, but it was just too little, too late. You know, you you can't. You, if you're 45 minutes into the game, you finally figure it out. Like, sorry, mate. Yeah, it's a good point. And look, maybe if they manage to get the Chiefs onto the graves one more time, they can sort of pigeonhole them into this sort of situation, and Dials can capitalize, utilizing a similar team comp. Yeah, I really like where like th this game. It showed to me that the Chiefs were prepared for Direwolves. But the best thing about best of three series, now it's a big reset button because you can only play that comp once. I would be very surprised if Direwolves fell into the same trap. So really looking forward to seeing what adaption does come out of both teams. Yeah, I mean, you only get that Chiefs win one time, but uh, that's the best of three, you know? First game is the best time to Chiefs. The issue is that Cheese is going to permanently be on the roster. So. <laughs> he certainly is, Atlas, and he's going to be in the mid lane for the Chiefs. They are up one nothing at the moment, but we are going to get on the riff for another game number two as we head over to Atlas. No, pastry time and Rusty. <laughs>
still the real Pastry Time spawn, but thank you very much. My name's Pastry Time, this is Rusty, and we're going to get ourselves into Game 2 for Dials versus Chiefs. A fun one towards the end, but like you heard on the desk, no real answer to, again, such clever drafting from the Chiefs. And you're right, 45 minutes is basically how long it took for them to realise how to deal with that team composition. I think a lot of the changes that the Die Wolves need to make Honestly, it should be the way that they play the laning phase to capitalize on the Whoa. farm heavy spooks. Well, better late than never. And speaking of, we're going straight through these bands. Graves, Poppy, Lissandra, out for Die Wolves. Twister, Fake, Gangplank, Tom, Kench for the Chiefs. Most notably, as Lulu goes over to shop, uh, Fandix champions are open. And there's Corky. I love this pick away from yeah, Graves. Corky's a great pick away. The Lulu as well. It's essentially picked away from the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. It's holy moly. Yep, there's our star. These guys are flying through this. So Lucian Braum for the Die Wolves there for two and three. And slowing things down, it's not too much. Ezreal Elise, the picks there for the Chiefs. How does one analyze? <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, Maybe wait for the whole team comps. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! I got nothing left. <laughs> Ezreal Corky actually picked, though, for the Chiefs. Taking Corky away from Rays in particular mm -hmm. and getting Ezreal themselves to be flexed between Cheese and Radar. I like this. Mm from the Chiefs. It's aggressive, and it's not the Chiefs we saw in Game 1. It's the actual Chiefs. Yeah, and again, we've seen Fantix play the Ezreal. Very competent on that champion. Uh, nice to see, again, Chiefs sort of taking away a lot of the primary picks. It might actually mid Corky, because Radio loves Ezreal so much, but he is proficient on both. So, mm -hmm. good flexibility here. But there's the Zac. It's a Sybil special. And what does Fantix get? He gets a champion this game. Yasuo is open. Cass is open. We've seen Cass and picked into Corky as well. Mm. I'm not sure if we've seen it picked into Ezreal, but I feel like it's a very similar principle mm -hmm. that if you stay in the minion wave, the Ezreal has to auto you, gets minion aggro, and you can just cue him if he tries to use magic damage. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Apparently every spell now makes that noise. <laughs> there's Kassadin picked in there for the dial. So Fantic's going to get a huge champion for himself here. It's not the Yasuo, unfortunately, which wouldn't have been too bad with Zack into double AD carry, but we'll see what the Chiefs want to round out their comp with. Yeah, I mean, the Cassidy and Pick in particular, like they already know every lane except for their new carry, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. and Swiper in that top lane. So you can pick whatever they want, knowing it's the Lulu now. And honestly, Swiper's got everything in the bag. He would go Renekton if he really wants to yeah. just continue to try and make Sharp's life a living hell. Oh, Sharp definitely has a lot of Lulu experience. Was a former mid laner, of course, and now definitely a lot more experience in the top lane, and it's showing, but proficient on the champion. It was kind of a go-to for him when yeah. he was starting out in the role. Yeah, it definitely was, and we'll see how he goes on this Lulu one more time. Swiper, we just mentioned, you know, he's getting all the resources, he's going to be the big carry, so Sharp's naturally going to have pretty rough time. Well, you can see maybe Fiora actually for Swiper, continuing the carry trend, in fact. Yeah. And he's going to be the pick here for Swiper. I like it a lot into the Lulu. But the Dials are fine comp themselves. Sybil's pressure, definitely going to have to really show up here, but Spook's on to something a bit more aggressive now. Graves was banned away. So at least there for Spooks creates a much more aggressive jungle matchup. Yeah, the Graves ban as well. Interesting. I didn't think Spooks had much of an impact, but they just want to get rid of that champion mm. from so the board strong. entirely. Spooks playing this Elise. They've got the Hyper Tank in Ejim on the Alistar, so it's another change for the Chiefs roster. And honestly, it's another very well-rounded team composition across the board mm -hmm. here for the Chiefs. The one thing to consider is Direwolf's laning phase in the mid lane is going to struggle. Their top laner is going to, I'm going to say, do well early and then really start to struggle anyway. A lot of the onus is on Sybil to make things happen. Yep, and he's got a good champion for it as well, Zach Ganks. We've seen them recently, I believe, in the OPL. Pretty deadly. We saw it from Jews, of course, yes. on Sin, where they played the very fun Alistar. The Sin comp, basically. Alistar, Yasuo, yeah. Zach. Some other champion that didn't matter. Well, the idea was the Wombo. <laughs> yes. And it was using the Zac as the primary engage tool because once you get levels into the elastic slingshot that you max first, the range is just absurd to say the least. Woo! Yeah, kind of flails one. behind him. <laughs> it's like an extended Soraka here. Well, you can see the team comes there on your screen. Give us the hashtags, of course. If you want, think Dial can take it to a third game with DW win. Or if the Chiefs are going to stay undefeated in games and matches and retain the OPL Legend title with hashtag CHF win. Of course, hashtag IMO for, your, oh, for all your OPL Twitter-related needs. And this should be a game Fantix must carry. He played Varus. He got more of a farming champion. His Kassadin is legendary. Gets banned so often. Yep. If he's going to go absolutely off tap and have a good game, it's going to be this one. And it was banned from him in game one. So this is the ultimate opportunity for Fantix. The ultimate possibility for Bubblegum Sybil as well. Because <laughs> he needs to focus that bottom lane, I believe, or mid. Top's going to have to be... And it was mentioned on the analyst desk, top has to be an island. Like, you just don't go up mm -hmm. there. It's a resort, getaway. Yep. I mean, Sharp's on Lulu, so you can go on a bit of a holiday. Probably 
not too, uh, probably pretty safe. As Cheese, oh, is that in range? Nope, just one auto. Cheese, though, is on the mid Corky, so where it is, love for Ezreal does prevail this time around. And Ray's on that Lucian. We heard Egym talk about knowing his Lucian back when he was a young solo queue player. Now here is a rookie in the o o OPL. Looking good in that last game. Definitely last hits the absolute smack out of some minions, but see if he can get a bit more damage to champions. Zone. He was doing work in that last game. And funny, they've gone for the Cassidy not knowing which champion's yeah. going to be mid lane, but if you had to pick out of the two, the Corky is the better matchup for Fantix to work this in with. Honestly, just a smart decision here for Direwolves. If they can bridge Fantix into the mid game, mm. I feel like there is a very real chance that this Cassidy will start to go off and hyper carry for his yeah, team. And that's something I think we haven't really seen from Fantix as a mid laner yet. Had a couple of uh, games like that as a top laner originally on Direwolves, but Mercy. move to mid lane. That's where he's comfortable. And this is one of his champions. So we'll see what he can get done here as Swiper. Hanging out on the top side with Spooks. Going to be helping out with the Krugs. And looks like standard lanes to start things off here. Yep. Standard start. Top lane is helping their junglers respectively get the minions that they were looking for. Everything's going to be standard, but we're working towards the bottom side of the map again naturally here. Both Spooks and Sybil go towards their strong side of the map where their support can roam and rotate if need be. Good Q there, but Cheese Auto is definitely hurt early on as Corky. Yeah. So Fantix going to have to make sure he's got plenty of charges in that Corrupting Potion, but Fantix probably knows almost every matchup on this champion. He's going to be just fine here. Cheese does at level 2, and there's the Cheese aggression we know and love. So that's the thing with this matchup, right, is the Q can get blocked for the magic damage that it deals, but if he's auto-attacking you and weaving them in at the exact same time, you can't actually trade with him. And Gatling Gun is an overwhelming source of power. It's actually quite hidden. You don't realize how much it does. Yeah, you can see a bit of poke there as well. Custom melee, a little predictable on those last hits under tower, so Cheese can abuse this fact as well. Even Gatling Gun just out of range of the tower. Very nice harass from Cheese. Fantix already threw all of his potion charges. Yeah, but of course it's a teleport mid laner here mm -hmm. for this Cassidy. So trying to get as much farm as he possibly can. He's got the masteries to sustain, sustain him as well. And he's going to be relatively happy yep. moving forward, but just such a volatile lane. And here comes the Spook pressure. Back to the lane we expected a Sharpie to Cocoon. Damage in there, and that's going to be a Force Flash, but the Vitals proxy in. Might be a kill here, and it is going to be Swiper. Flashes forward for First Blood. Really well timed here from Spooks. The ward was going out. Generally three minutes to three minutes thirty is when you'd see jungle pressure come into that top lane. But catches him unaware, going straight from the top side of the jungle to the lane before he can ward. Takes him down and no answer because let's just say it was a timely vital placement as well. Yep, very nice stuff all lining up as Fantix continuing to get harassed under this turret. And she's still weaving those autos in He's nicely. Fantix, he flashed. Yeah, he had to. She's didn't even have Ignite this time, believe it or not. And she didn't use a summoner spell, so big benefits gained in this middle lane. Fantix overstayed his welcome indefinitely. Yep. I think a little too greedy for the minions, so, perhaps. Speaking of greedy. Yeah, he's going to TP back in. So out of <laughs> summoners now in mid lane. No, I don't mean summoners. He's got a dark seal. Oh, my. <laughs> that is greedy. That's aggressive. Uh, he's yes. got his mini Mejais. It certainly is. Let's see if he can get yeah, really heavy on the farm here. So, I mean, I don't dislike this because he's looking for Civil to gank. Ejim has now Kudan. Yep, Kunid actually a little bit too much roaming here is going to be okay. Yep, Sybil, no, flashes out. Too dangerous. Yeah. Dragon actually aggro would have knocked him up, so it does just get out safely. I believe he was waiting for Sybil to come closer to him so yeah, that he could jump to too. him. Yeah. And then just like, nah, see your peace. They made the dragon mad. He's like, oh, hang on, hang on. We can't do this. And Spooks is just hanging out in mid lane being annoying. Yeah, Cheese wants to recall. Desperately yep. wants to recall. And so, Spooks just here to help him clear the wave. Fantix actually in a decently big point of power as Sybil. Whee! <laughs> oh no! Caught shopping! Forced to use the flash now on Cheese. Red buff Zach is going to force the flash as well. A Fantix <laughs> moment for Cheese in this game. <laughs> I will safely say I'm not sure that Sybil should have used the elastic slingshot that early once spotting him. He did catch him window shopping again though, Cheese. It's a bit of a, a bit of deja vu, I yeah. will say there, but it's in the other direction this time. Yeah. 
Cheese was the one to catch Fantix in the first and that's game. That's actually a great equalizer. As we do have a pause, shouldn't last too long though. And yeah, kind of funny little moment there. But actually, getting someone is as relevant because <laughs> yeah. now the lane feels a little bit better for Fantix, who I think should improve once he gains some levels, and of course, once he gains items. Well, yeah, Cheese is an aggressive player to say the oh, least. Yeah. So not having Flash or Heal available on this cork, he actually wants to make him play back and be a lot more mm. passive. The thing with that is now that also gives perfection a lot of utility because once he hits level 6 and it isn't far away, they're ticking over to 5 now, then summoners mean less to a Cassidy than anything else because his ultimate is essentially yep. the flash that's already been used by him in response. So there's a lot of positives to get from the Diables just from catching cheese yeah, shopping. There is. And I guess with 6 approaching especially, is that gank pressure now for Sybil? He already ran into the lane, just, you know, moseyed on up. Yeah. Slapped old Corky and got two summoners. I feel like he can return, especially once Riff walks up. Absolutely gank pressure available, though, in this middle lane. Zack is always going to have gank pressure mm. in a middle lane. He's just Zack. It's kind yeah. of the way it works. He can pressure all of the above if you're looking at lanes. It's Yeah, look, they're going to focus this mid lane. If they don't focus this mid lane, then he has to be bottom. I think they just give up on Lulu. Just yep. let him go. Ignore that he exists. Work mid. Get the Cassid and Snowballing. I think Illusion Brawn, which is the bottom lane for the Diables, is very self-sufficient mm -hmm. as well. They don't actually have a necessity to gank that lane. Still dangerous. Yeah, and I think on the flip side, it's actually Spooks that's provided the early jungle pressure in this game, which is good, because that's what the guys at the desk are asking for. It is nice to see him with a very well-timed gank. I feel like it's rare to see a Spooks gank, but usually when he ganks, it's probably correct. Well, the way that the Chiefs work and Spooks works with the Chiefs is that all three lanes win. Yep. And he doesn't actually need to gank. He can just sit back and he can farm. But if there's an opportunity for 300 free gold and more lane control because they're being aggressive or something to that extent, of course, the Lulu into Fiora, you try and auto-attack the heck out of Swiper in this case if you were going to be the uh, sharp here from the Diables. And easy to capitalize, catch him warding. Lots of positives to gain for Swiper. Certainly are a sharp. Back in top lane, of course, did burn the TP earlier. Swiper still has his, but we'll clear a pink lord out. Doing just fine, actually. Slight CS lead there for Sharp. So, again, as long as he stays safe, he should be okay. If Sybil's actually come for a visit, but Swiper's like, nope, not interested. He's going to ward it. You would have to imagine. Oh, oh face no. Check. Face check instead. Not going to fight, but Sybil not really in position with Lulu to try and make something happen. A Spook's going to come for a mid lane visit this time. Yeah, level 5 Fantix. Ooh, good timing here, Spooks. Yep. Gonna go in there now. Cheese just runs straight for it. The damage is good. They are gonna run in for the dive here. Fantix with a good slow, decent little shield. Might keep him alive, but Cheese does want to run. He needs one more auto oh. attack. Plus breath bomb. Not quite enough. And Cheese Fantix is still turn running. Around. Oh, he's gonna go in for it. Finds it. Great trade and pings level six as well. What are you doing, Cheese? Oh, Cheese. No chance of killing him. That doesn't even. That's not even like Cheese level aggression. That's just silly. And I Fantix thought that was Cheese six? level aggression, yeah. A kill there for the Fantasy. We talked about the Cassidy and Snowball. Gifted on a silver platter stacks. and the Dark Seal stacks to boot. That was awkward, to say the least. Oh, he's now 13 CS in the lead with a kill, so effectively about 25 CS in the lead here in this middle lane. That's just unbelievable. I've just... I love it, and I, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> yes, I love that you preface that with, you know, he doesn't have any summoners. He's probably going to play back a bit more. Nah, still Cheese. <laughs> But does cost him dearly there, as the kill is up for the cast. And the only one for the Diolves currently, as we check in with the bottom lane. Radio up on CS this time around. But but Edim's Alistar getting contained a little bit better this time. Raised there with a BF, so it should be just fine. And you said it already, very self-sufficient here. Yeah, absolutely. This bottom lane for Diolves should be fine on their own. They don't necessarily need the gank pressure from Sybil. And if there's one thing to note, it's the fact that Cheese has decided to be hyper-aggressive, there's real opportunities for him just to come mid against Sybil. Yeah, I think so as well. And Sybil, not quite six yet, but still plenty of damage to be done here. As a blue buff is actually going to go over to Cassidy. But it looks at things on the old minimap, so we do have another pause. Apologies there. But yeah, I think just a, a clear mistake there from Cheese. And how much it costs the Chiefs this game... I guess we'll find out in maybe five to ten minutes. Well, you look at how much small details are affecting these particular games here between the Chiefs and Direwolves. The, m the smallest difference is like Sharp showing himself in bottom lane in the first game. Mm -hmm. Gets him killed. Snowballs the Olaf. Bam. The game's potentially lost from there. This mistake in the middle lane is also on a hyper carry on a Cassidy. So mm. lots of oversights, I guess, from Cheese. And no, I'm not going to say that I'm surprised that he chased <laughs> no. him. No. 
under the turret <laughs> that far, but I am surprised that he continued into the jungle. Yeah, and good awareness as well from Fantex to know really the limits of the champion yeah. in the matchup because he's like, I mean, he had to run, but he actually made it even better than that by like, now I can get the kill. You even said it as soon as he was able to turn around and Fantex flips the switch, collects the kill, and that's great. <laughs> and if Sybil does start coming here, she still doesn't have any summoners. Yeah, it's... I just, if that Rod of Ages comes up... I know, it's, it is funny. It just tilts me. Like, <laughs> just don't do that. Woo! No, it's not even... <laughs> yeah, like, if I, basically, that was like Kudanijim <laughs> levels right there. Honestly, I just... You do you, Cheese. He certainly did in need. that last little exchange. A very unique player, but... I think just thinking about the draft a bit more here, I think sacking Lulu is, is good, and he's actually fine right now. If Spooks applies more pressure there, which... He maybe should do because he has time. And Fiora's got plenty of damage if they CC him up that they can probably get the kill there. I think top half of the map is really where we look to. And just thinking about some early itemization here, I actually do like the fact that Dialves don't have double tier this time because I feel like they spent a lot of time just hanging out, shooting stuff, charging tiers, and then couldn't fight till mid-game. They're in a... Obviously, Kassan, like wants to get into a better spot, but they're in a much better position now to actually get aggressive when they want to, which is a bit earlier, I think. Yeah, I feel like... so. The way that the games basically should unfold from here, I mm -hmm. think it's just that Spooks goes top, kills top like three times, and the game is over. But it's so hard to execute on that when Sybil's got control of the map back mm. based off the way that the Direwolves, or Cheese in particular, has been playing. I just think that one small thing has started to snowball pressure in Sybil's favor. Yep, well, we'll see as the game develops. So we do have a quick pause, but we are going to throw ourselves back to the analyst desk. Thank you so much. Ah, pastry time. We are back here at the analyst desk for a little bit more of a chat. Unfortunately, guys, we still are in a pause, so stick with us. We'll be back in game as soon as possible. But want to open it up to you guys. We kind of said spooks. We expect a lot more jungle pressure this game. Try and switch it up, and he certainly delivered on that front. Like instant first blood there in the top lane. So Sharp already falling behind a little bit based on that one. Of course, so much damage out of that Elise early game as well. I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not sure whether he was listening in between the stream there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, look, turned it on. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, big turnaround from the first game. So that's great stuff from him. Um, I don't think Sybil was playing that bad, though. Yeah, no, Sybil still looks like he has control. He's on Zach, who one of the few tank junglers that you feel that you always have an impact as the game goes on because he just gets so much better as you get levels in there. But I want to talk about the draft a little bit. You pointed out that Chiefs kind of put themselves in this poke comp situation with the Corky Ezreal when an early Braum had go gone up. That's a little bit disrespect there. Yeah, I feel like it's straight up just a disrespect draft. Uh, I feel like, you know, Direwolves tried to play poke the game before and... Uh, Chiefs have just said, well, you know what, just because you can't do it doesn't mean we can't do it. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, like they early picked the Braum and then they picked Poke anyway. So, look, unless they get super far ahead in lane here, um, I think uh, they'll have a significantly more difficulty this time. Yeah, and I, I actually want to mention the whole get really far ahead in lane because I have a feeling that the Chiefs thought that that was exactly what they should do as well and they tried to dive perfection past his turret into his wolf camp and suicide. Give him level six. Give him a massive CS advantage. We actually there have as the well. replay, so let's take a look at it. I think we like we can just roll this one because Atlas, you kind of already talked us through it at exactly what happens here. Yeah. So it spooks again. Fair bit of damage. Look at this. Oh, fantastic work. He now has to go back to base. Cheese. 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 <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> Cheese. 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 In the slow motion as well. Yeah. And, That's uh, tragic. I kind of feel like Cheese was the little train that couldn't. Because he thought he could. He <laughs> thought he could. He thought he could. In the end, he could not. And the bad thing about that was, like, even if he got that kill, you saw the Zack that was actually positioned in the mid lane, ready to jump over that wall. You felt like he was not getting out. As you can see him on your screen there. You know, he's yep. definitely a dead corky. So, as I said, Chiefs are a very well-coached team. They're drafting what I thought was a good comp, but maybe in a little bit of a disrespectful manner. And they now have Cheese as their mid laner who shows that even though he's joined the team, he's still little cutie cheese already. Yeah, little cutie cheese already most definitely. But look, it's still early days, but the problem that I'm seeing right now is the fact that Fantix, he's on Cassidon, he now has a kill, stacks on his Dark Seal that he bought, it's looking very scary at the moment. Certainly is looking th very scary, but not from us because we are back on Summoner's Rift. So I'm going to throw you back over to Pastry Time and Rusty to get us back in. 
Welcome back, guys. As yeah, good insight there from the desk. Love to see the replay again. I'm sorry that you had to watch it one more time. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes pastry time. She just had his do. moment with a very convenient pause after he did it. So we got to rewatch it in yep. all its glory. Obviously, Cheese has had a bit of time to reflect on his decision making and can be okay. As uh, we will pop back into the game. Good. <laughs> he was just standing out of the bush, Woo! just watching them. <laughs> he wasn't saying we man, he's Braum. There's no oh, way Braum's true. pitch goes out. Yeah, no, that's true. Ooh, no. Nah. Ooh. <laughs> well, we'll leave it for now as uh, double check back in. I remember that Dark Seal actually. It's interesting to hear the word disrespect. I somewhat agree with the comp here for Chiefs, even though I can also see what they're doing with it. But I feel like Dark Seal is just. Yeah, I guess a little disrespectful from Pantix. Either he's like, I have to snowball this game and need a snowball item, or he's like, yeah, pretty sure I got this. I just think it's funny as well, looking on the side of Cheese with his item build, going towards the Phage instead of a Sheen, because he's now struggling in this laning phase. And yeah. a lot of his trading capabilities have come from the Sheen doubling your auto attack damage against someone when you're doing primarily magic with spells. Yeah, and this is one of the unique things about Cassidy. Like, look how bad Cheese is going in this yeah. lane right now. You can see... Real good pressure there from the Cassidy and Fedex. Not going to quite pull the wave all the way over. Sharp playing back. He's actually still up on CS, so staying even in the situation is good. He does have his flash and his ulti up as well, so going to be a bit harder for the kill there. The Swiper also getting the free farm. Has the team up as well, so just farming here. Pretty different top lane. There's one carry, one utility, but should be just fine. World record reconnection paces <laughs> as well. The of sickest course. internet. <laughs> And Sharp, again, still hanging out here. Good vital proc there, oh, wow. very nice. And Sharp's like, yeah, I don't really like this. Gonna hang out my turret and just clear waves and hope I don't Lots die. Lots of pressure from Swiper. That's mm. the thing you have to take away from that. Trying his hardest is, keep in mind, we said Cheese has made a mistake, could be disrespectful. He's now got a package, so if he were to tower dive, he could at least make it to the second if turret only this time. he had it before! <laughs> <laughs> Would have been perfect. But not this time, and Fantix has complete control of this lane. He's almost 20 CS ahead as well, plus that kill. And the Rotovate is coming up very soon, you have to think here. So it's strength here in the mid lane for Direwolves. Top lane actually looking good as well. Sharp pulling ahead slightly in CS. And bottom that. lane as neutral as we'd expected, I guess. We're just naturally gravitating towards this lane because we just feel like cheese. Yeah, you have he's to got the package. It, right? oh. oh, you suck. He, didn't, he hit both summers this time, he didn't use the package. Nah, he's struggling in this lane. He's actually starting to pull it back a bit. Mm. Uh, the ultimate poke out of the cork is great. Can kind of keep you in it with surprise damage that the Cassidy can't shield. Yeah, you can see Fanatic starting to play out much more aggressively in the lane. Sharp though, could be in trouble. Repost for the slow. Sharp gonna move it around, but needs to cover the vital. Doesn't quite cover it enough. But good, good damage trade, back though. in from Sharp though. Oh, now here comes the challenge. Wild growth pop though. This could be it for Sharp as Swiper basically forces ulti for ulti. That was actually good for Sharp. He pushes Swiper away. Both have their teleport, so I don't think any kill will eventuate from this, but he actually won the trade. Yeah, smart stuff there. Really good use of those Lulu cooldowns again, showing some of the practice on the champion. Fantix, too aggressive that time. Corky's auto still hurt, buddy. Definitely, just wants that farm. He's actually going to recall, and I would say timed well with the blue buff being given to Cheese here. He's going to push in himself and find a lot of money back in his favor. And it's funny, we are talking a lot about mid, but that's because top's going to butt heads and never die, and bottom is just literally never going to butt heads. Yeah, no, it's been a very uh, balanced lane there on the bottom side. We kind of expected it's, you know, more of these brawly team fight or skirmish supports, I suppose, and EGM, probably most importantly, has not been allowed to roam this game. Sybil. That's aggressive. Just chilling. Yeah, he actually walked through that pink yeah. ward to place vision and force Swiper to walk further back. Mm. Lane control is absolutely with Sharp at the moment. Yeah. And the teleport will be forced here to get back for the next wave. It's such a subtle thing too, but it's actually good detective work because as soon as you swipe her back, Sybil's like, he's on the bottom side jungle. There's no, like, especially with Blue being up. Just a yeah. nice little thing there. And she does get that. Actually going to go back himself. Fantix, able to walk himself back to lane. It feels like he's hanging out at the turret. But mm. he's going to go into the wave now. Dipping up cooldown boots and a blasting one. So no roller wasn't quite there on the money, I don't think but he's going to get some early CDR instead. Did he have boots at all uh, when he went back with the Catalyst? Maybe not, actually. So he would have had would have been road. Huh. Yeah. Opting towards CDR boots. Earlier pressure. Earlier cooldown reduction. And it doesn't really matter at 11 minutes to effectively and efficiently scale the rod because yep. he's still getting it early. Certainly is with 
Strong farm as always. Here's another challenge. Sharp not going to ulti this time. Needs to be careful. Vital's getting proc. Good polymorph off there from Sharp. And now he pulls it in. Sybil coming up with a great reverse there from Swiper. He does burn the flash. Slow will follow. And they might be able to chase this down. But Swiper does make it under the safety of his turret. Well played there by both sides. And we said not to focus top lane. But I think Sybil's doing the right thing. Just because of how aggressively that they're playing this. Oh, Fandex. It's just like, sucks, yeah, spooks. that's what I, I literally pointed my skin like, what are you doing here? Yeah, there's <laughs> Ray's. Oh, what is Ray's gonna do now? Yeah. That's the problem. Oh, 3v1. It's a bad time. Does have all his summoners, so unless he gets absolutely shrekt by a spooks cocoon, it's gonna be okay. But we might just have a tower trade here. Chief's working on this bottom outer. Wave does come back in. Radio Lush? No, he doesn't. I was gonna say, if the no ultimate was yet. there, he could clear a wave. But going to lose this tower instead, I think. Sharp did take top tower, though, so it will be a trade, effectively, across the rift here. Mm -hmm. But Reyes can't defend it. Kudun, I didn't mind the room, but Chief's able to translate easily down to the bottom side and take a tower. Yeah, a lot of pressure was avoided just by Kudun being around to watch Spooks. They knew that he was going to come bottom, so Reyes smartly backs up. And sure, they happily trade the objective, which isn't a bad thing by any means here for the Direwolves. Quite content with sitting back and farming at the moment as they've got their scaling items in place. Yep, and Fantex does have the roll now as well, so starting to charge that up. Good timing there at about 14 minutes. And she's also on the way to Trinity Force relatively quickly. Blue buff does go over to the Cassidy, and we're starting to see these first power ups. In fact, Swiper and Sharp have good ones there as well. Titanic versus Roller, they're sort of the expected standards. But they're lane swapping, so they're not actually going to be versing each other as the Chiefs took the bottom turret and immediately walked mid. And Fantix, look at the damage starting to do. Level 11 will be a nice power up as well. Cheese is going to have to be careful, especially without his Trinity Force. Not able to trade Clyde's effectively. And Roller obviously better when it charges, but not too bad right now. He's already top lane, going to try and get some work done. And this comes back to something that Carbon said on the desk, though, Pastry Time, is that they want Ejim to roam. And now that they've got the bottom turret and they've rotated Raider to top lane, Ejim's just going to be exclusively roaming. And mm -hmm. this is a really big opportunity for the Chiefs to get it back in their, basically, and advantage. A sharp has done the right thing here. You, you can't do anything. No, he left. <laughs> so he does just leave. He is going to give the tower over, but what pressure can Dives convert? This is the other side of that. They need to make sure they're trading well. Raze is going to just try and chunk down the bottom tower, but Fiora is there to challenge. No. So that's the thing. They haven't revealed their position on the map here, Direwolves. They're actually near mid, but Swipe is assuming they're bottom because yep. it's an immediate lane swap response. Raze is alone. Yeah, he's going to take it too. Nice little mind game there almost by the Direwolves. And they might get both, which will be a great win for him. In fact, she's with the package. And Sybil in the area. Oh, he's going to go in for it. Fantix now going to fight him, but the damage might be too much here. The rest of the team is swooping in as Lulu going to port into the area as well. Hmm. Oh, it cancelled it. Sharp didn't want to complete that. I think that's the right play, but Chiefs now got the outside tra inside track Sorry, straight in onto this mid tower. Zach's nearby. He's got the flank if need be. There it is. Good time to go in, but they only find Ejim. Cheese dodges out of the way as Kuhn is now going to move forward there on the Braum. Sybil taking poke. They might just defend the turret here, but... What will they lose, if anything? Damage is good there from the Chiefs. And the poke is exactly what the Chiefs needed, being an Ezreal Corky composition. Big item spikes and working towards that objective, speeding up the pace of this game indefinitely. Good coverage there from Kudan, actually. But Culling, not quite enough there. I think they tanked up some of the hits. They want this. They really do. Chiefs took a tower hit. Edom just took another one. No, and Chiefs, he'll probably take another one. <laughs> Just for we took like five in a row last time. See if he can break his record. Sybil again though, gonna charge things up. In he goes, finds Radio and Cheese for the knockup, but Ejim headbutts him out of the way. But Fantix comes in, finds the slow, they can't dive past the tower, or will they? No, far too low to do so, and Fantix burns his TP. A good cocoon from Spooks actually connects with Raze, and that's a lot of their damage that was unavailable. Swiper. They're working around Swiper. And once again, Swiper on the carry top laner. This time a real big carry on the Fiora. Forcing Sharp to go down with no TP. Chiefs once again feels like they're playing around the map a bit better. The Dials were keeping pace, but oh. Oh, Chiefs gets away. Sybil, more pressure. Can they get this mid turret? That'll be a big win here for the Wolves, and it looks like they will. Yeah, definitely. Going to get this middle lane turret. And they're the first to break in the middle lane. That gold lead is stretching if they can retain their own. And oh, hello. Sybil again. Now Fantix over the top, and Spooks will make the flash, but Fantix. Will make the aggressive play. Riff walks in early. He's going to get the kill. Now has to get himself out and uses the flash, but his team's there to save him. 
Better safe than sorry. You do not need to use your ultimate to last hit as a Cassid, and he has availabilities everywhere and did have the flash to get himself out. Court spooks out of position. This is the power of Zack yes. and the range that you can engage from and the mobility of a Cassid to follow you up. Daiwal's team comp right now needs to be respected. Yep, and good aggressive ward spotting him there at the Wolf Camp as they also get the Dragon in the exchange. Cheese almost dies 1v2 effectively to Fantix, who's starting to really go off. He's got four stacks, he's got his Blasting Wand. You can see why it's banned away from him. Fantix is not a joke yeah, on this sort of champion. In the drafting phase, you don't give him Cassidy. He's just known historically even yep. when we were on the NA server mm -hmm. as the, one of the few people that got Challenger playing Cassidy. So... Says a lot about this guy's history. And I'm this, just very surprised yeah. he has it on. And this is such a big moment for Fantix. We've seen him get champions that he's known for every now and then, but teams always seem to have an answer for it. He's never quite had a standout game, despite how consistently well he generally plays. Like we said, this is a real hard carry game for him, and he's set up to do so. If it was just a farm game, I could maybe, you know, say, okay, the pressure's not really there, but 2 0 with a Dark Seal with every advantage you can want, including your laner making a mistake against you and gifting you a, a kill. If yeah. Fanix can't go off in this game, there'll certainly be questions, but he's set very well up to just absolutely romp through this. Yeah, that's right. The standard set, he does have to meet the expectations here. Raze is also in a great position, though, to put in some work, and they've got the Lulu to complement all of the above, basically, if someone does want to go in and... Here they go again. Tower still low, Kuden covers again, Raze. He's going to get the last hits here, but the tower will go down. So the Chiefs equalize the objective, effectively equalize the gold, although there is a thousand gold up for the, uh, for the dials right now. Is that One ultimate minion. didn't do anything. Solid single minion <laughs> does go down. <laughs> Collects the gold at least. Yeah. And you can see Raze grouping pretty heavily with his team. Does have his two items. Chiefs even got the BF sword ready now as well. So it's not like the Ch uh, Chiefs don't have fight power. And with Swiper getting bigger, He's going to go back and get a Phage now. He's pretty annoying in that split push battle, but Sharp right now is actually answering quite well. And you can actually see the shot calling from the Chiefs. The second Chiefs came back to lane, he was like, Raider, get out. Yep. <laughs> I'm behind in farm. I'm behind in kills. I need this lane. And immediately Ezreal just goes and farms the jungle in response. And honestly, the Chiefs, Chiefs are trying to consolidate what they can at the moment. Nah. Pretty hard to against Zach. Nice steal there from Silver, just walks up and smites away from Cheese, who does want the farm like you mentioned. Right now though, it feels like a little bit more time might be needed for these teams. Everyone's sort of building up towards two big items. We've got one completed on everyone, as Abyssal actually just picked up for Fantex there as well. I'm not quite sure what point of tension we're waiting for, but there will be a fight relatively soon. We talked about the 25 minute Direwolves, they're going to have a real strong 25th minute. They absolutely are. Something that needs to be considered. There's no point going for the dragon fights. There's no point fighting around the Baron this early in the game. It's becoming a vision battle a lot earlier mm. at the moment. So the first person to get picked out of position is usually the first ones to start losing the game entirely just because the vision then gets cemented even further. Zack's the kind of champion where vision is actually essential mm -hmm. to ensure that you don't die to him. And if you are him, to ensure that you can engage effectively and know that you're hitting priority targets. Yep. Raze was baiting that ward, by the way. <laughs> Good stuff there. And we did see killing Spooks earlier, so you can see just how valuable that vision for Zach really is. As bottom lane, Cheese with a package oh, looking for a gank. And Sharp, I think he knows. He's, he's got running, his eye in. He's running away. But here we go. Cheese over the top. Wild Growth disengages it. And that's probably it on that one. Yep. The ward spotted him super early. Cheese had no choice but to try and go before he got away. You've only got a small window to use that, so they mm -hmm. did what they could with it. Yeah, got a flash, not too bad. Actually stole red buff as well, so good overall pressure on that south side there for the Chiefs, but... And the Lulu ulti as well, which is yeah. big. Not going to take much though here for the Direwolves. Oh, here we go actually, looking for it. Ejim's the target, but that's awkward. Headbutted away. Bandix chases aggressively. Cocoon, not quite there. Radius sort of corner, but will shift over the wall to safety. Actually, a flank there from Sharp as they are going to look in for Radius. Civil all the way over, almost gets him. And now Swipe has forced a TP in, but Egypt goes in for the ring engage, pops the ulti and lands the combo. And the Chiefs are now on the assault as Kuden is going to try and peel them away. Cheese actually caught up to the right, but Sharp does hit a Cocoon. No ulti for getting Cheese. It's just going to tear him down. Swiper jumps in onto Raze. The repost is there as well, but he can't quite outplay it. It's close. They actually do do it. Kuden peels away, but Lucian will die. In fact, 
Bantic's nowhere to be seen with barely any health. She's going to chase down one more kill on the Chiefs. Take it four to one. Make it. Yep. Four to one with Sybil dying. Yeah, they're going to get the fourth member. Of course, Bantic's is the only survivor from this direwolf side. And the Chiefs, again, they know. Lulu's not capable of fighting. The teleport's already been used. The flash is down. The ultimate was not there. Sybil, he can try and go in and be on the back line, but he's going to be alone. And he just doesn't have the capabilities to stay alive and complement the rest of his team by being there. Raze has to just naturally go. I'm telling you, man, these spiders. Yeah. <laughs> they killed him again. They certainly did. Denny in the first series. Speaks <laughs> going, going again for that same build we saw Seb go for as well. Runic echoes into Rylai. not the Cinder Hulk build we saw last game from Sybil. And you think again, Dial's just waiting for a bit of a better spot there. Smart pressure there from the Chiefs. But need to see large rod now for Fantic. Zonnies is going to be the big key item for him. Because at that point, he has to just go off. And the gold lead is basically the difference in kills. It's non-existent anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was after getting four kills. So completely reset here from the Chiefs. Direwolves, they need to step up in this next fight and get themselves ahead. And what do they wait for? Level 16 on Cassidy now, I guess. Maybe. I mean, might be a little too late. Ray's actually in a bad Swiper spot. Swiper knows he can. Swiper absolutely can. Challenge issued. Swiper just slapping him down. Ray's, good luck, my Oh! Whoa! Might make it out, but not quite there. Swiper, easy 1v1. Cheese, not quite there for the assist. Nice juke, but not going to be enough yeah. to keep you alive, as that's the opposite side of the map. This is Egym. a smart play. Egym is going to be forced to ulti. They miss Raiden with a knocker, but Egym might go through the ulti, and Willa Sharp takes him out. But the re-engage is there. Cheese does a lot of damage, and Fantix needs to go in. Massive three man. It's a wild growth pop, and Fantix now on a killing spear, smashing through it as they have to kill Swiper. Parry is there. Kuden will fall there as Swiper is taking them out, but Fantix, another kill as he gets a shot down. Now Cheese has to get out of it, but Sharp's going to slow him to high heaven. And Sharp's going to collect it. That's almost an ace for the Direwolves. Spooks is the only re member remaining this time. This looks familiar. Direwolves actually find themselves winning a skirmish. Four members dead from the Chiefs. And this is another dragon that the Direwolves are going to be able to pick up. And it just feels like this game is so back and forth. It is so close. And it's coming down to skirmishes and team fights. And Direwolves can match the Chiefs in those. Yep, and they've been team fighting exceptionally well. And this game is much more even than the last. Still effectively even in gold as Fantix is so close to the Zonia's Hourglass. He's got 10 stacks on his Dark Seal. He is worth so much money. And he's got a Lulu to keep him alive. That so, was gross. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he got caught in the fight. and He went in to do damage, got caught, but then Lulu kept him there. And he just got stacks up on that ultimate and just took everybody out. Didn't even go down himself. This is a scary Cassidy 4 0 and 2. Certainly is. And the rest of the dials, no slouches either. You can see Ray's building up with the two items. Everyone on both sides getting nice and strong. And I have to say, on that last play in particular, the dials are not letting the Chiefs run them around nearly as much. That was a great reaction to the bottom lane kill. Absolutely. They found a pick onto Ejim, who does occasionally get caught trying to place vision down. So smart work here from DW. Yep. Killed him through the ulti as well. Just couldn't quite pop it in time. And did die as Sybil. Pretty big now on the Zac. Spirit Vizard finished with the Giant's Belt also hanging out. It's my favorite thing about Zac is he actually just gets <laughs> bigger the more items he has. Mm -hmm. It's very visually appealing. It you is. can tell how strong he is. Intimidating perhaps for the opponents as Files now a little bit more momentum here in this game. Swiper still split pushing. Fantix actually, I think, trying to take whatever empty, empty farm he can. He does have TP. It's not up just yet. But you mentioned it already. Most importantly, he's going to go get his Zonis, but he does want level 16 as well. And they early rush the banner of command here on Egym to deal with Sharp and his split pushing. And I kind of like this because yeah. even Fantix will struggle to take that down if he chooses to split. And that's kind of the path that I think they may want to be taking here. Well, let's see if we can swipe a bit of extra help. Egym once again sort of hanging out with the Swiper. No Shen this time, but promoted Mini will have to do as his little buddy. Cheese finds a ward. He's got the package, so you know he's ready to go in. Not that that's unusual. <laughs> Not at all, no. Two items as well now, so everyone on the Chiefs starting to power up respectively themselves. Diawol's having three items on their mid laner, the rest at two and a bit, if not a little bit under. Gold distribution's a little bit skewed on the side of Diawol's this game. Hmm. Well, they gave the gold to the right man, but we'll have to wait a little bit to see where the next little scuffle will be. 
Again, the Dials know their windows well here. <laughs> Don't want to force things too hard here. Such a good cheese went IE. That's great. Does yeah. an absolutely massive amount of damage. It definitely does. Cheese is scary at the moment, but I don't think it even compares to Raider, who's just super scary. Honestly, I look at the side of the Chiefs, and I think that Swipe is the one that has to hard carry. He's capable of split pushing, and he's actually capable of letting Direwolves come to him, control the map just by putting pressure down. If there's a banner of command, that says to me that the Chiefs actually have that as a strategy. Yeah, I think so too, and we'll see if they get to use it here. We do have another pause, unfortunately, but this game is unfolding nicely. We are, of course, going to go back to the Analyst Desk. Welcome back to the Analyst Desk, guys, where we're playing League of NFL, and tactical <laughs> timeouts are everywhere. <laughs> However, <laughs> this game has started to unfold in a very unique manner. Seems like it's kind of the Fantix, not perfection, Fantix versus Swiper Show as they're trying to get advantages either in the split push or in the team fights. I mean, uh, we saw a very nice team fight there just before the break. Um, but just before that, we saw some very nice split pushing. So um, I'm curious to see what will happen. Um, uh, we actually have the team fight replay, so let's just pull yeah. it up on your screen right now. And this is really key because Sw Swiper's ultimate is down. Um, the other big thing is uh, EGM saves his ult really late in this. Can we roll the clip? So he gets the Brawn passive, and he only ults at the very, very end. Um, Fiora's coming to roam up, she has no ult, and these guys are just running, just delaying, delaying, delaying. And then Fantix hits him with his huge burst, we get a big ult and a glitter lance, and then it's just clean up after that. Um, Brawn does work here, Brawn does absolute work, and we said that before the game. Um, and then, yeah, Sharp here misses the glitter lance, but kills him anyway. Yeah, so in the end, Dai was able to take this one quite handily. Before that, the Chiefs had won a fight one for four this time around. It's a two for four in Dai Wolf's favor. And it seems that Dai Wolf's, we keep saying it, if Chiefs split them up, look like they're a little bit out of sorts. But as soon as it gets to a 5v5 situation, have something in their sleeve. Yeah, this is the thing. And the Chiefs, the mistake that you can often make when, when you're looking at their team comp at things that could possibly happen in the game is you forget that they just managed to pull out team fights from nowhere. So that team fight in the mid lane before this uh, skirmish that we just watched, it just showed that Radio is fantastic at kiting on Ezreal for one, and the team is just brilliant at managing to organize these team fights effectively. So we saw them come out ahead there, but when Fantix is able to charge his ult like that and just smash people off the rift, this is why it's so scary when he gets the likes of Cassidy, because that's three people that he basically deleted from the fight. So if the Chiefs make any like wrong move, then it's all about Fantix, and he can just do it himself. Yeah, and as the game progresses, death timers get longer. You can say the same thing on the other side of the rift. Sure. Rays cannot go answer side farm anymore. That part of the game is completely done, and it really does seem like it's a macro play of a veteran lineup against what is pretty much the young mechanics crew on Direwolves. We've always complimented for the tenacity and the team fighting, and if they can balance that macro play, they will have the ability to get it done. However, guys, we are going to jump back onto the rift. So I'm going to throw you back over to Pastry Time and Rusty to get us there. Thanks again. This certainly is a game unfolding here. We could push ourselves to game three, finally, in a best of three here in the Opel. We are going to pop ourselves back in. And like we said, a very tense moment here in this particular game, Rusty. Yeah, still definitely on a knife's edge. Very tight balance here between committing to fights and setting up for said fights. At the moment, I feel like the dance is going to continue, but honestly, I just think that between Dialves and the Chiefs, that Sybil has better engage, and he's going to be the one to pull the trigger. And the question is, how does he actually pull it? Yep. And set up his timing and set up for everything here, certainly, as we do see. Actually, a bit of a change. So, let's get one thing right here. Ray's now going to group with his team be a part of the roaming three-man squad here. And looks like Sharp and Fantix, they do have double TP advantage, remember. Whoa, going in again, that's a little too far though! Oh my, headbutted all the way over, but they're still gonna go in. Sybil nice and tanky coot and pops himself forward, and Radier is somehow getting away in a brush. He just pieced out. Yep. <laughs> it was just so easy for him. Direwolves, that was actually blind. They didn't have vision of Ejim being in that bush. So kind of... Lucky, but also kind of calculated. You can tell the Die Wolves are keeping tabs. And again, they're going to spot Ejim. Like, it's all about their vision at the yeah, moment. Yeah, just so much more proactive. And the vision, like you said, is so important at this point. And the Die are just doing it not better necessarily, but certainly better than last game, where they pretty much couldn't leave their base at any point in the evening. So, starting to get to a very big breaking point where whatever fight happens... Well, I mean... 
We said we were probably going to be waiting for level 16 on Cassidy, mm -hmm. and he's now split pushing with Teleport at level 15. And there it is. Oh my. So, you want to fight Direwolves, Chiefs. I think you don't want to fight Fantix. No. And even Swiper right now might not want to either, but Red Buff's going to go over to Ezreal. Chief's going to regroup themselves up. Swiper oh. definitely doesn't. He just pings. He's like, you're still <laughs> here? I don't want any of this. Get him away from me. And you can see Fantix, I think, knows that doesn't have the best vision. It's not too bad. He's going to clean this up pretty quickly. Does use the Rift Walk late. He wants to be safe. And now time to go back, spend some gold. And probably group for a fight. Dragon in 30 seconds. Not a bad place to start one. But you can bait the Baron here as well. And there's decent topside vision for Dials. Although it seems like a lot of that's been cleaned up by the Chiefs. So very vigilant warding and de-warding on both sides here. Yeah, basically. it's it's Again, it's a dance. It's a battle. Who can actually commit to vision enough to engage the next fight and execute with enough enthusiasm and like <laughs> as a team? Go in and commit. Know that you can win, essentially, right? Don't want to blind engage. Direwolves are kind of working around the dragon above all else at the moment. Not wanting to pull any triggers around Baron control. Yep. In fact, the Chiefs have a lot more of their efforts towards clearing the top side jungle. Simple's done that like three times. Yeah, just charging it up, making sure the button still works, I guess. But Direwolves onto this dragon. Chiefs want absolutely nothing to do with this. And they're playing pretty clumped far back in the half of the map at this point. That is number three, though. Yep. So it starts to put a bit of pressure onto the Chiefs now to address these dragons. Hey, there he is. Little promoted minion. Helping Radiant. Trying to steal his... He didn't maybe trying to steal the CS with the cannon. Always a fun one. <laughs> That's actually the best. <laughs> <laughs> if you've already caught like, micro it, how fun would that be? It's like... Control try and out, Yeah, try and outlast it. Your AD carry. I'm sure Radiant would <laughs> highly disapprove. As he's going to stay front of the wave, might fancy a duel with Raze. He's going to go in for it. But Ray's just going to turn and fight him. Ray, a good flash forward, but Ray's going to try and outplay. Young Mechanics, no, it is there. And now Spooks is going to chase it down. He will get the counter kill, but Ray's really showing off now. Not entirely sure why Ray Dare stopped to use his ultimate. Does get dodged, and Ray's outplaying Ray Dare. And now Fantix is actually split pushing. Purely on the castles. Let's just watch this again. So the engage was there from Raid, who actually flashes here to get another Q on, but Raid knows. He immediately responds into the minion wave, somewhere that Raid will never focus. And seriously, Raid could have killed him if he just auto attacked instead of ulting. So I'm not sold on that strategy. Raid's played it right. Is actually Fantix going to turn it back around, but Grand Challenge is on to Fantix. Sybil is here as well. Spook's going to get the jump on. But Fantix does not go in for it. He needs to wait. The repels popped in. Actually, a flash forward for Sybil. Now Sharp's here. Shut down as well. And that's oh Chief going in for it. But Fantix, he's massive wall growth pop. And Cheese just dies with the package. What are you doing, Cheese? Spooks was caught out of position. Zack smashes them and forces him into such a weird spot where he has to oh, go down and die. No, Fantix is way too healthy. Never mind. He's actually already at the fountain. I just... As he's finished a Void Staff now as well. Cassidy's damage is ridiculous. Yeah. He's got the package. What are you doing? I don't man? know. Jesus, that's twice now at he's least. Confused. This game, he is genuinely confusing me. Oh, and Direwolves. Aggressive play once more. Starting to feel themselves now a bit, and the Baron is going to get started up here. Radier, do not walk near the Cassadin, my friend. No vision here for the Chiefs. They're going to lose Baron, and they're starting to fall behind in this game for real now. This is the ultimate opportunity for Direwolves to get themselves a victory against the Chiefs. We could be looking at a best of three series going all the way here, Patriot Time. And it's looking like on the back of this Baron push, this game will be decided. And yeah, what a series to start it with as well. And Styles are positioned to win the game, but certainly need to actually do the job of winning it now. But I've been playing smart. I bet the Chiefs a little sloppier than we've seen before. I feel like their comp hasn't quite done what they wanted to just yet. Of course, they can team fight when the game goes later, but. I have to answer this particular problem. Oh, speaking of problems, Fantix has found his true enemy. The promoted cannon. God damn that guy. Can he like... He's not even touching it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the actual last how, hits over how here. How long will it take for him to kill that? Not long. Oh, okay. That's sad. It won't take him too long at all. Well, Cheese is going to get blue buff here. See if he can hold on to it this time. Did go a little too deep with the package on the last exchange and... 
The, the Lulu Kassadin combo. Looking good here, a sharp. Also split pushing. Dial's using his double TPs quite nicely. Yeah, the fact that Raider has to answer this. Oh, Polly. Actually, Cannon helping out as well. Wild Growth pop just for the dueling power. He needs it. Raider trying to flash out of the way. Mechanic sniper for Raider. Good flash from Sharp. But Raider does nail the 1v1. And Raider gets the revenge outplay mechanically on Sharp this time. Whereas he didn't with Raze the first time. This is what the Chiefs need. Someone to step up where Cassidy isn't. Yep. Fantix again. Getting aggressed on by Swiper. Swiper, I think, starting to get to a point we can maybe really challenge the Kassadin and get the kill 1v1. So let's watch this 1v1. It's just amazing how long he stays as a critter for with the Lulu W. But Sharp was focusing the tower to kick it all off. The ultimate doesn't knock up either. But most of the spells connect here from Sharp. It's just that the machine gun Ezreal just constantly hitting those Qs. Yeah, a little too much damage there on Sharp. Well, go back to base a little sheepish, but pick himself up a death cap and avoid stuff somewhere in and amongst us all. The double AP here from Diwolves. Pretty massive all of a sudden with their new influx of gold. And will they keep speed pushing or will they actually force some sort of team fight? I have to feel either way, they're in a decent spot. Well, they've got Vantix happily split pushing against the Fiora. And I mean, the kill pressure is starting to get there for Swiper in all honesty. If he hits vitals, it's actually pretty dangerous. Yeah. No, it's just such a big castle. So huge. And Baron is up for a little while longer, but I think time's going to run out on that relatively shortly. Four turrets are through. The Dials get a bit of damage done with the Baron, but don't make any massive headway. Slow and steady seems to be the Dials method here. And you can tell by the way the Chiefs are warding right now. They've got emphasis on pink wards in defensive positions that will last a long period of time. And they're actually controlling and holding their own right now with Vision quite well. Uh, it's only in their own areas though, only in their own jungle. They can't really branch out any further. And so if they are to make a pick, get a team fight, something that goes out well for them, they're not going to be confident pushing too far. No, and the Dial's actually, I think maybe playing patiently around the Dragon. Dragon 4 is up in about 15 seconds. This is adorable. But still not going to go in just yet. The Repost is there. So are the Chiefs. Oh no! Face check Swiper! Just gonna get absolutely munched on as he does flash out of the way after a nice little parry. The Chiefs though are gonna fight in. Kudin leaps forward. Chop is available, but he needs to TP in. Raider is playing hyper aggressive, trying to make things work for his team, but even with Swiper having that little health remaining, he still continues with the aggression. Civil flying all the way across the river almost on that play. Is Ejim going to get forced back? Sharp did TP down. Dials want to force the Dragon. It's done. And now Fantix finds Cheese with a slow Sybil all the way over. He's going to force a flash out there. And now Ejim, oh, pulverizes the ground. Didn't really have a good combo target anyway, but... It's still not good to see a frustrated ground pound here out of <laughs> Ejim. Dials are starting to turn on the aggression. Yeah. Look at Sybil. He's just hiding behind walls like it's like fiddlesticks right now. Finding all the little it. pockets. Yeah. But Dials will disengage. Raider will trim the top wave with his ulti and try and push back the assault. Dials have done a good job controlling Dragon. And Dragon 5 is going to make the scary carries that much scarier. You thought Vandix was good now. Just wait till he's powered up with Dragon 5 in six minutes' time. And it's so easy to look at this game and question the drafting from the Chiefs by giving him Cassidy above all else. Has definitely showed up in this game. The Chiefs are still in this one. It's only 4k. But with that Dragon Fire as an ever-present issue for the Chiefs, there's some serious win conditions now available for Dials. Yeah, and Dials have been playing very patiently, pretty much all series long, but they know they've got a good lead this game. I suppose they're comfortable with their scaling, and they probably would be too. As Sharp's even going Lich Bane as his last item for a bit more carry mode. Even the Lulu, the utility, does... Actually respectable damage, or will, once he finishes the item as Radio once again, trying to hold the waves back as best he can. But they've aggressively pushed forward as well right now. They've got four members grouped here with Swiper splitting. Chief's starting to bite back. Yeah. Did take the reprieve there with the shopping trips to find a nice spot here. And that tower's going to get threatened in the bottom lane pretty soon, so... Dials are going to have to back away, and the Chiefs are still staying grouped towards mid lane. Top wave, I think, will push as well with Raider's ulti being used. And Fandix might be looking for a flank. He's found Spooks. That's a good target. Repels popped, but they'll wait for him. 
Now Sybil maybe going to chase in onto Radia as the ulti actually does nail Legion, but not the best target. Radio goes over the wall, and the damage is quite good. Swiper about to join in, but Egym is forced to flash out. Does get out to safety, but Wraith flashes in aggressive Civil. Massive Wombo combo ulti, and the Dialogues pull of a perfect team fight. Swiper, the only one left alive, but not for long. An ace for the Direwolves. And the Zack and Cassidy combination, coupled with a Lulu ultimate to just knock them all over the place. Civil comes up massive for his team right now. They win a team fight, complete ace in 40 seconds is a very long time for the Chiefs. The Wolves are rewarded with for their patience. They find a picture perfect fight, a clean ace. And they might just shove to end the game here. Ejim is back in 15 seconds and the damage is here. And we are going to game three right now. The Dire Wolves play it back against what was the title-holding team right now in the Chiefs. Yeah, one game away from taking the title and giving the Chiefs their first match loss in a long, long time. We expected it to be a thriller. It is going to go all the way to Game 3. And man, what a way for the Dials to fix so much of what went wrong for them in Game 1. And nearly a picture-perfect ending to that game as well. The ideal engage, and they couple it so well with Luke. Yeah, Page Play is a reward, but we're going to get more on that game from the Analyst Desk. What a performance out of the Direwolves. Able to make their long-range initiation comp work, but let's take it back. We mentioned time and time again, this composition out of the Chiefs made very little sense into the early pick Braum, and you could just see in the team fights they could not get it done. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, they decided to pick uh, Poke uh, with a Fiora split, and I mean, Fiora could split, um, but yeah, they, they couldn't 4v4. No, just flat out couldn't. And look, it comes back to... Fantix, man, you get he got Cassidy. He got the Cassidy. But let's talk about this because I actually really liked the Chiefs drafts when I saw it for the lane assignments. And then mm. they didn't put the right lane assignments in. You have an Ezreal that is a very like hard, hard counter against Cassidy at the moment, and they still put it bottom lane. Like that was strange. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that one either. I mean Ezreal fares a lot better than uh, than Corky does in that mid lane, especially because um, a lot of the Q, dam uh, Q shield sorry, from Cassidy is negated. Yeah, don't know why. Maybe they were just following suit from international play. Who knows? Yeah, Maybe Cheese doesn't play it as well. But That's also possible. Yeah, definitely possible. General stat is that at the moment, Corky does 65% magic damage, and that's what we're talking about. So generally in Ezreal matchups, you have to actually max the E on Cassidy. And that time around, just max the Q, got through laning phase really easy, took it all over, and it led to this. We actually have a replay of the last team fight. Atlas, I want you to take us through it because this just shows the range that the Zac has. Yeah, exactly. And Direwolves, their ability to follow up as well. Let's roll out the clip. And as you can see, Spooks is about to get caught. Fantix over the side gets a massive amount of damage on him with that slow. And Chiefs, look, they do a decent job trying to kite back. He's, you can see Cuden with a brilliant ultimate. Radia gets the ult over three. And then it looks okay. Like, Ejim flashes over, gets lots of shields. He's fine. And now, everything just goes to hell for the Chiefs. Yeah. It's, it's just done. Sybil gets ulted. Fantix in there with so much AoE after that uh, ult has been charged for so long. And man, it's just Swiper then against the world. Yeah, and it was almost Sin-esque when you look at how mm. that goes. A lot of people give credit to Sin for the Yost Wombo combo. Mm. Yeah. That was a pretty nasty combo there. I mean, I really loved um, that Sybil held on to his ult for so long there. I mean, he got the first engage on the Elise, then kited it back out, went back in again on the alley. Still didn't ult the entire time until he saw the perfect clump and, uh, yeah, gave him the, uh, the old Sin Wombo. Yeah, gave, yeah, got a lot of work done. But we were also talking that this game kind of degraded. Like, it was... Mm. We, we keep calling it the Ost Game 2, guys, because, like, Game 1 looks very, very clean. Like, you know, it, it took a while to close out, but you could see that they were still playing to win conditions. This game had Radia trying to 1v1 raise and then failing, so then going to search for Sharp and then winning and then Swiper. All he wanted to do was kill Fantix for some reason and he kept getting <laughs> caught out. What is up with Oceanic teams and losing their brains in the second set? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know for us, sometimes we feel like we're already ahead in the second game. Uh, obviously, you're not. You still need to play well. And um, yeah, look, Chiefs are, yeah, they were left, uh, left lacking a bit. Mm. First game Chiefs have lost in 10 months, Atlas. Uh, this, if they lose this series, it will be the first series they've lost in about 10 months. Ridiculous. Do you think Diables have got what it takes? 
I reckon they do if they manage to at least draft as intelligently as they did in that last game. And we we've already stated, you know, this is the Wolves. They're the comeback kings. Are you sure this time though? Because when I actually I am sure this time, Swan. I am sure this time. When I asked you for a prediction, you said Chiefs. I'm just double checking here, buddy. Want to make sure we're on the same page. However, guys, we are going to go to a break. (laughs) When we get back, we'll find out if Atlas is correct. Actually, I don't even know. Let's go to break. (laughs) 